Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Our guest is a highly celebrated Nigerian film director, screenwriter, and producer. He's fondly referred to as one of the champions of the emerging new African cinema. He's the founder of Treasure Wells Academy and the host of Breaking into Nollywood Workshop, which he has successfully hosted in Lagos, New York, Atlanta, and Dallas. He's also the founder and creative director for Passionate Communications Limited. Let's make welcome a man who is very passionate about sharing with young African the know-how of smartphone filmmaking, Ike Nebui. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Thank you for gracing us with your presence. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, you. we had to summarize it, but it was, a, <laughs> a lot you know, more, a lot yeah. more. Yeah. How, how did you find yourself in this space? Wow, it's quite a very interesting question. Mm. <laughs> you know, I never expected it. You know? <laughs> but summarize it. No, I mean, I never expected the, the question. Because yeah, right. I was like, you know, start to, you know. But it basically, how did I get here? So, um, I think I'm one of the lucky ones that discovered early in life what I really wanted to do. Mm. I think that helps a lot, you know. So, for as far back as my early 20s, I'd already made a decision to be a storyteller, mm. you know. Um, at the time, it was music and then films. And it wasn't either music or film. It was just both, both of them were just like, you know. Um, and the kind of music I was making was also storytelling music, you know. So, um, but as time went on, the filmmaking sort of took the front seat, you know. And, um, <laughs> you know, when you start to get older in life, um, it's not just longer about passion, it's mm. also about, you know, mm. sustenance. Mm. Ego. In my Ego. <laughs> In my idea. So, mm. um, so the movie making, you know, became the thing that I started to do more and mm. more mm. to the point now that when even I tell people that, I, oh, that's my song, they'll be like, ah, Aww. please. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so basically, um, I started... I defined what I wanted early, and I stayed on that, that course. Yeah, right. even though it wasn't okay. Easy. So I personally like to meet people in the film industry that are not necessarily actors, because they're the ones that kind of like make movers and shakers, right? Mm -hmm. um, but we've had a lot of actors come on here that I've met even offset, and there is a problem with. There's a lot of problems, sure. Yeah. But one of the ones that really um, blows my mind is the infrastructure and also the way money is trickled down for something so beautiful and so consumed they're still broke and there's no money um, what would your take be on why that is a reality for a lot of people um, so I always say that Nollywood it's it's like a microcosm of Nigeria mm -hmm. you know if Nigeria is working in a certain way it's, there's no magic that will make Nollywood to work in a different way. Mm. We, every industry in Nigeria takes the cue from Nigeria, mm. technically, mm. you know, and realistically. So I was watching someone, one of your guests in one of your shows was saying that elsewhere insurance companies buy banks. Okay. Yeah. Mm. But in Nigeria, banks, banks buy, buy insurance, insurance companies. Company. Mm -hmm. So. Nigeria seems to be like a place where things just don't work the way they work elsewhere. Mm. You know, it's like elsewhere you're creative, you're like, you're, 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 okay. you're, 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 mm. you're good. Mm. You know, you write one book and yeah. it makes mistake and becomes a bestseller. That's it, you're settled mm. for life. But mm. have we ever produced a bestseller? Like aside from mm. like them Chino Achebe the and Rishoyinkas, Rishoyinkas. Rishoyinkas. Mm. how many bestsellers? Does it mean that we don't have writers? Mm. Doesn't mean we don't have great gifted writers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take it to what's in the news because I mean we love analyzing that. Um, on the previous episode, we had a conversation regarding what Van Vika said, saying that um, we need to open the cinemas. Although he was talking about Ghana and how churches are allowed to open, but the cinemas are still not allowed to open. And we had a conversation regarding that, and we we're saying, I mean. When you look at the cinema, it's sort of easier to control the movement and ensure that maybe people buy their tickets online and come in and maintain social distancing and business goes on compared to having to handle what goes on in a church, right? So would you um, be part of the stakeholders in that regard? Although in Lagos State, of course, the churches are not open yet, but would you be part of the stakeholders that would say, 
let's look at the measures we can put in place and see if cinemas can come back um, to being functional. Just to add on top of that, she's biased with that question. She <laughs> wants to go it's and a trap. watch a movie. It's a trap, <laughs> right? It's supposed to be open. It's a trap. Right? <laughs> um, to be honest, um, whenever um, the government, Lagos State government, decides that it's okay for churches to open, right? I would expect that it would be okay for clubs to open. Clubs? Wow, well. Okay. That's a stretch. I wasn't wow, expecting Wow, <laughs> Shake okay. the table. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would... <laughs> 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 and then, I mean, to be honest, if churches can open, then cinemas can open. Yeah. Mm. Like you said, it's easier to control the crowd in cinemas than in church, you know. But I know it's, it's also easy to control crowd in church, actually. Mm. It's doable. Yeah. So um, even if it's about spacing, you know, it can easily space in cinemas. Even the seats are numbered. Mm. And the tickets are, they can tie tickets to seats. Mm. You know, like in the US, they can buy, your, your seat is there, so you don't just go straight to your seat. Mm. Um, so yeah, and, but again, this is Nigeria. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's tiring. Okay. This is Nigeria. And let's talk a bit more about content now. Uh, a lot of the times, for me, Nigerian movies can be a bit super, like, lower than standard, just a little bit, okay? Yeah. And that's me being polite. Um, <laughs> but I've seen that your work seems to be gaining a lot of attention, a lot of grants, like you just put on your Instagram and your documentaries and things like that. I haven't seen any of your work, to be very honest, but I want you to speak for the others who are like me who haven't seen your work. What is different from the mediocre that is shoved <laughs> down our faces every minute? <laughs> Please tell us. Well, I, I will try to tell you, but the truth is, because it's an artwork, mm. you just have to experience it mm -hmm. to know what is it that people like about my art. Mm. You know, because like, art is art, you know. Mm, but you cannot lie and say that you've seen media, media work. I know, of and then you. So what's that? What's the difference between you? I'm, I'm sure you wouldn't describe your, your work as mediocre. If not, you're not going to be on this table. <laughs> but what, what, what are you doing that others are not doing that it's, is that like so far? Okay, so I, I try to pay attention to details, hmm. right? Um, I feel like it's an art, you know, and maybe if you talk to other filmmakers, maybe they're not even seeing it as art. Mm -hmm. But you get... For instance, there are people who are seeing it as business, mm. and so their approach to content creation mm. will be different, Very different from someone who is looking at it from the art point of view. Okay, I like that answer. <laughs> I do. Okay, so <laughs> tell us about this documentary you're working on. What do we expect? What is it about? Mm. That documentary, it's... Um, it's, it's something that gets me very emotional. Okay. Yeah, oh. um, no, seriously. I was one time... Do you need a tissue? No, mm -hmm. I think I'm good for <laughs> now. <laughs> for now. Um, I, was, I was asked this type of question some, in some lab that, you know, and I started to talk about it and I started crying. Mm. And I, I just kind of surprised myself because I, oh. I, I never really felt like I could get to a point in my life. Yeah. Like I've, I've philosophized everything. Yeah. Why am I crying? But then it was just so... This documentary is very interesting to me because it's a personal story, right? Um, about 22 years ago, I left Lagos with the three of my friends and we said we were going to Europe. We had no ticket to any European country. Well, we had no visa to... Not even Togo. Mm. <laughs> we only had a passport. I only had a passport and some money. Some money that we put into dollars, right? And, and we, we set out and we were very excited. I, I just turned 20, you know, and it was such, but it was such an amazing experience, mm. I would say. But we believed that we were going to be in Europe in the next two weeks, they mm -hmm. told us. And we were already planning what we would say when we would cut home and, you know, send pictures of... Is it like this trafficking form of movement? Yeah. Okay. Nice. So, you know, so we had to go to uh, Togo, from Togo to um, Ouagadougou, mm -hmm. Burkina Faso, then go to Mali, then go to Western Sahara, mm -hmm. then enter Mauritania, oh and cross into Morocco. Wow. And then from Morocco, you Spain. take your boat to Las Palmas, Las one Palmas, of the islands yeah. of Spain, you yeah. know, and other. Um, I was in Tenerife last year for this project, mm -hmm. and they showed me the beach, 
and they say sometimes we stay in this beach and we see people, wow. Africans, crossing over. Wow. Mm. I'm already looking forward to this. Yeah, where can we find it? <laughs> so, it's, we're still, still working, working on, on it. it. How yeah. soon okay. will it's it be? It's going to be on Netflix. So, there's no cinemas now. Don't just leave us hanging like that. Where are we going to watch this, mm -hmm. this crossover? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have access to it. Oh, very soon. Sure. Sure. Yeah, because we already were working in partnership with Arte France. Nice. Okay. You know, um, so definitely. And then, um, I think it's afridocs.com. Okay. Mm. Unfortunately, we'll, we'll time is never enough, but... Yeah. We'll look out for this beautiful documentary because of, of that journey. Like, What's the what name goes of the on? Not you no, no U-turn, turn, right? No U-turn. Okay. Thank you for doing it <laughs> with us. Mm -hmm. And thank you for watching. My thank you will go to my co-anchors, Ife Omai and Ife Oluwash, okay, who had to step down. And of course, our guest, Ike, thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, remember, you can watch Tea Time all over again on our YouTube channel, our Plus TV Africa. Also watch on Out to TV and in London on Ben Television. My name is Elsie Godwin. Please do stay safe.